Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and today on Tips and Techniques, we're gonna talk about how to grill chicken breasts on a gas grill. We are getting back to basics. This is Gas Grilling 101, how to cook a boneless, skinless chicken breast on your gas grill. And really what I mean to say is how not to overcook and dry out a boneless, skinless chicken breast. It's an honest mistake, one that we've all made, but with a few simple tips and techniques, we're gonna make sure that you get juicy, flavorful chicken every single time. Now we'll start by talking about selection of chicken. Uh, generally speaking, you want the least amount of stuff added to your chicken when you're buying it because it gives you more control over the cooking process. So I'll look for chicken breasts like these that say on the package, no added water or no added solution. And if that's not an option, just choose something with a lower amount of that water or solution added. Often these companies that are selling you your chicken are assuming you're going to overcook your chicken, so they pump it full of some sort of solution to try and help counteract that. But in the process, you just end up paying for the solution uh, when you could just simply pay for a better quality chicken. So while brining is not a bad idea, and we're gonna move on to that next, you don't necessarily want it to be done to your chicken before you get a hold of it. Now, brining and marinating are both great options for quickly adding flavor and moisture to your chicken. Uh, a marinade in its simplest form is an acid that uses that acid to break down the chicken and add extra flavor, whereas a brine in its simplest form is just a salt water solution. We're using a brine product uh, called Cattleman's Grill Butcher House Brine that happens to go beyond just salt, adds garlic, onion, a little sugar, all good things. But if you just want a simple brine, a quarter cup of salt in one quart of water is gonna get it done in about half an hour's time. So we'll get these fully submerged and let them soak for about 30 minutes. Well, now that the chicken's had a soak in the brine, I wanna rinse off the excess brine off the surface. And the reason that we do that is because there is a lot of saltiness to it. So if you wanted to go on and season this with something other than just brine, you'd be over seasoning it if you didn't rinse it first. And really the brine is about what it adds to the chicken, not what it adds on the surface of the chicken. Now, before we move on to seasoning, I'm just gonna take a look around and see if there's anything that needs trimmed off of the breast, like this hard material right here that would have been around kind of a little knuckle area. It's just not pleasant to chew on. And look, you can do this before or after the brining process, but we're just gonna make sure we clean up anything like that. The other one that's fairly common that I don't see on these is every once in a while you'll pick up uh, a bit of a line from that breast bone uh, that's, again, just kind of unpleasant to chew on. So now moving on to seasoning. First, we're gonna hit this with just a little bit of fat. In this case, some extra virgin olive oil. Uh, but any sort of binder will work. And it can sometimes depend on your flavor profile. Uh, maybe you wanna use sriracha or a hot sauce. Uh, there's any number of ways you can go into seasoning Today we've got the Cattleman's Grill Blackening Seasoning. And again, we've already brined these, so let's not go overboard on the seasoning on the surface. From here, I just wanna make sure that the rub looks like it's attached to the meat before it goes to the grill. So just give it a minute or two to sit until it looks wet on the surface. Today we'll be cooking on the Napoleon Prestige 500 gas grill. We've got it set up for two zone cooking. So one half of the grill, the burners are over medium high heat. The other half, they're completely off. That way we have a direct and indirect cooking zone. I'm gonna start by getting a little fat on the grates. This is just a vegetable oil, something that's got a little bit more high heat to withstand the high heat, I should say. So the chicken's got this nice gloss to it now. We're ready to put it onto the grill. Sizzle at first touch is always a good sign. So starting to get some nice grill marks on our chicken here, creating a good crust. And that's a combination of leaving the lid open and closing it because you do wanna make sure you get some color on the outside before the internal is fully cooked.
Now that we've got good color and a nice sear on one side and they're flipped over, the next part is the most important part of this entire process, and that is make sure you don't overcook the chicken. And in order to do that, an instant read thermometer is gonna be your best friend. Now there's tons of options out there for different instant read thermometers, but buy yourself a good one that you can trust and know I'm never going to take this chicken past 165. And honestly, that's kind of on the high end for me for a chicken breast. Uh, now, that is what the USDA would recommend, 165. I often pull my chicken breast at 155 and let them carry over cook up into that 160, 165 range. But that's where you're gonna get the juiciest white meat. So the other tip that's worth keeping in mind is you always wanna be aiming for the middle part of the thickest part of the breast. We're creeping up on 160 on the last one, so we're gonna pull this off. Now, one last tip before you slice into your chicken breast, go ahead and let it rest for about five minutes. That'll give it time for all these juices to redistribute from the center all the way out to the edges. And then what you get is juicy, tender, flavorful white meat. Mm. Works every time. Just a quick recap of everything we touched on. Protein selection, try to go for minimally processed, not anything that's been pumped full of a solution if you can help it. Brining and marinating go a long way in a short amount of time. Trust your thermometer and that means if someone tells you a specific time to cook your chicken, you're not paying attention to them, you're not listening to times, you're watching your thermometer. Your grill, it changes from day to day just depending on the temperature, so even at your home, it may never cook exactly the same. And then finally, rest that meat at the end and save the juices. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit that subscribe button. When you have any questions or comments, or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.